That is Drake Toll, Locked On Big 12. We, of course, go to him anytime such news pops up. And Brett Yormark made a couple comments. Nothing overly blasphemous, Drake, or absurd or insane. But I want to start with the first comment that Yormark is projecting an image of the Power Four being united right now. It is what he indicated. They're stronger than they've ever been. Big 12's in a good spot in this scenario. That's, of course, what he would like it to be. I, I just don't know if I am buying that the Big Ten and the SEC have the best interests of the Big 12 and the ACC at the forefront of their agenda right now. Are you? Uh, I, I'm not sure if you ever watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie on Cartoon Network. Oh, oh yes. Oh, very much right. so. Cartoon right. Network classic. And whether it's Three Stooges, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, or any of those, there's always that one guy out of the three who just doesn't exactly belong. He's definitely the third wheel of the three. And his role is to say that the three have great rapport or a really good relationship. Now, I wouldn't say the Big 12 is idiotic or stupid. And I would argue that of the Big 12 and the ACC, Brett Yormark has more leverage leeway than Jim Phillips in the ACC, especially because that conference is being sued and the Big 12 is not. For your mark to say this, feels like he's touching the bases, just covering what he needs to cover, checking the box and saying, look, hey, we're all friends. Everybody here gets along. We're all in really good standing with one another. And what else would he say? I think the second you start picking fights with other commissioners, other conferences, things go south. George Klievkov said, we're not sure if we're shopping there yet with the Big 12. That was a little bit, just that little comment was one that was seemed small in the moment. But afterwards, when you're not playing nice with conferences that view you as lesser, things can go south very quickly. For your mark to save face and be political, not a bad thing. But I do think you're right. This is almost subliminal. He is saying more with with less. That small comment of, hey, we're all cordial. We're all friends. There's great rapport amongst us is the guy in the conversation who's not near as big as we know objectively as the SEC and Big Ten saying, look, we're all good, same page, we're fine. And I, I'm not sure if that's actually true. Yeah, and it, it rings a little bit, not entirely of the uh, infamous Big Ten Big 12 or uh, Big 10 Pac 12 ACC alliance back in the day. Like ev everyone is yeah. on the same yeah. side, so to speak, right until the almighty dollar comes into play and, and that comes along. Because right now, Look, I, I do I do not want in any way, shape or form for any other conferences to go up in smoke. I don't want the Big Ten and the SEC to pull away. We're just reading the terrain here and saying, look, th this stuff could happen. Th this is absolutely possible. I really hope it doesn't because college football is great because everyone is, is a part of it because you have these regional conferences that go from coast to coast and teams compete and all that all that comes into it. And if you were to just have the Big Ten and the SEC playing for their own championship, that'd be boring. Like, not boring is not the right word, but it would well, not. I, I, it'd Spencer, be a different sport. You've you've hit the nail on the head here. With people love seeing Georgia, Ohio State until they don't anymore. Until it's so saturated that that product is not something people still want to come back and watch. Someone actually, I, I wish you could name that. Someone commented that on one of my videos recently. I read like three comments a month, and they said, "Look, I understand right now." Everyone wants to see Alabama, Michigan, but the day will come three years from now where they've seen it too much. And that product after the trilogy of Star Wars is over, nobody really cared about the fourth movie. After that, we thought, all right, we need to keep going. And the general public isn't behind it. The, the small portion, maybe. But if you oversaturate college football, what's left with college football? And you bring up a great point of oversaturation because the other comment that your mark made that I definitely disagree with is... More teams, more access, more student athletes having the ability to get to the playoff. 14 team play. Drake, I've had this take for a while here on the show. I will repeat it till it comes to fruition. And then I will say, well, I, I tried to tell you playoff expansion is not going to stop until they at least hit 24 teams. That might be in the next deal, but for those who are saying, well, 14 or 12 might be too many, or 12's my upper limit, or 14 is, is too many. Every time you crack open the door, what people are gonna see behind it 
are dollar signs. And when they are there, they are not going to say no until the FCS has a 24 team playoff. And you are just going to hear the argument eventually when someone says, what about an 18 team playoff? No, that's too many. Well, in the FCS, they've got 24. Yeah. That's where we're headed. And that's why I put my foot down and say, no, please. Michael Scott, no, no, God, please. No, please, no. no. You can go now. <laughs> it is. Look, I, I don't feel bad as the hat comes off. As those host of Locked On Big 12, going against the rhetoric of the conference commissioner, there are times where Brett Yormark says things, and I think, oh, maybe he has the right intention here, but it's not exactly spot on with where college football should go or is going from a traditionalist standpoint. Someone told me recently, Brett Yormark is a college fan first and a businessman. I think that's the stupidest thing in the world. He is business oriented. Everything he's done has been about the dollar sign of the bottom line. Is that a bad thing for a commissioner? I don't think so. However, these comments seem out of touch with what college football fans believe. And I don't want to bring the hoops to the college football podcast here, but he also I'll said, allow it. He said, expand the NCAA tournament. Like, Brett, it just, it feels so disconnected from what your fan base wants. However, again, what I believe he's going for here is uh, my friends, Greg Sankey and the Petiti guy are saying that we should have more money. So I think I should say the thing that gives everybody more money. And that in essence, from a business standpoint, you think, all right, you're aligning yourself with the Sharks. You and Mark Cuban are in the same little pod here. That sounds good. I just don't think it's a good product for college football in the fact that we have a sample size that says, you know what? The BCS, as much as it sucked, got the national champion right a good portion of the time. Bring back the BCS, Drake. (laughs) Bring back the BCS before we go to a 12 or 14 team playoff. I'll die on that hill. I would rather see the bit. Look, if you want to propose a six or 18 playoff, I might not push back. Eight. I don't know about that, but 16, like, okay, but 12, 14 beyond that i'm i'm going full teddy bear and family guy here comes the train and you're gonna explode me into a a poof of stuffing here because that's the way it feels and i mean expanding the ncaa tournament like oh my gosh no just please i i don't know how to make it stop other than use what platform i do have here to voice my opposition and get as many people on my side as i can but i don't know how to stop any of this like does it stop I, I don't think it does. And it's it especially doesn't when there is no little man. I, I, the word monopoly is a really good way to get sued. So I won't say that anything is a monopoly here, though. I'm not sure they're going to sue a locked on college host. But truly, that's w- what is becoming is one or two conferences, a la one or two TV networks, are calling all the shots here. And they call shots based on revenue, money, what's going to make the most money. And if that's a college football playoff that's expanded, we've seen the what? The $1.1 billion price tag on a 12-team playoff. So then they think, well, wait a second, what if we expand it to 24? That means more money. And in essence, Brett Yormark's in a position where if he says, I'm going to push back on this and be the the guy who's the altruistic, best thing for college football, I can make it work, then you kind of look like those people who are screaming for a Super League that have no power. The people that the SEC and Big Ten won't respond to their phone calls and ESPN and Fox want to dox them entirely. Those people don't have a lot of say, and Brett Yormark doesn't want to become that outlier or Rembrandt, because if you do, you ask for zero dollars. And in college football, obviously, that doesn't work. Drake Toll, Locked On Big 12 on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Drake, thanks for stopping by. A frustrated Drake Toll. Frustrated. Yes, we are a pair of frustrated podcast hosts here. Is Kalen DeBoer frustrated right now? We'll talk about that next. 